hello, we are live. Welcome to Eat Like a Vegan Chef. My name is Frank Kramer. I'm your host today, and I'm the founder of Eat Like a Vegan Chef. Today, we are cooking a three course menu, and I have as an appetizer a cancer fighting salad. It sounds a little strange, but that salad, that salad includes ingredients that happen to um, help you in fighting cancer. Uh, that's of course, that's what science says. Um, we try to eat as best as we can. So we try to include ingredients that are healthy. Uh, the main course is going to be uh, eggplant in uh, eggplant teriyaki style with uh, buckwheat and uh, herbs. As a, up as a dessert, we are going to have a brownie with walnuts. Uh, everything is completely plant-based, whole food plant-based. And uh, well, I guess I'm going to start with the brownie today because that takes the longest. So feel free to uh, introduce yourself um, with your name, where you're from. So in that, in that case, I know you're there. Uh, it's always nice to see who is who's watching. And if I have a name there, I can address you. I can, I can uh, say hello to you. Um, I would appreciate that. If you have any questions, as usual, you can always ask any questions at any time. I will answer them as soon as I see them or towards the end. Okay, so I guess I see already Stefan. Stefan is in the house. Welcome, Stefan. I uh, appreciate you coming in. Um, Wonderful. Okay, so I'm going to get started with the brownies first, since they take the longest. Okay, the oven is already preheated. Um, that's very important. Let me take my bowl here. Okay. Obviously for, for the brownies, uh, usually brownies are made with white flour. I have used spelt, spelt flour, which is uh, a whole grain. Um, it's uh, actually pretty good for, for baking and cookies, baking cookies and cakes. I like it a lot. Um, okay, so let's add the flour. Then we add the cocoa powder. As usual, I will post the recipe later. Uh, by the way, before I forget, uh, my website is uh, live actually, and I will post this recipe and the live stream on my blog later on this day, probably this evening. Um, so from now on, I will always post my recipes on my blog. So in this case, you don't have to look and where it is. Go to my website, check it out, you can print it out, and uh, you see it right there. And I see we have a few others. Hi, Loretta. Welcome. Hi, Joel. Hi, Kelly. Welcome. Welcome to Cooking with Chef Frank. I really appreciate that you're coming in today. Uh, thank you so much. And I said uh, earlier that I will be, maybe I should uh, repeat the menu since not everyone heard about it. We are, I'm going to cook, uh, as I said, a, a cancer fighting salad which is made with ingredients who, uh, which are very healthy for you. And uh, as science has told us, they fight cancer or at least uh, prevent us from getting the cancer as long as we eat a whole food plant-based diet. Um, then as a main course, I have uh, eggplant teriyaki with buckwheat. And as a dessert, I have um, walnut brownies and um, I will cook the brownies first because they take the longest. Okay, so I start with dry ingredients. Um, I mentioned earlier I use spelt. Then uh, I have uh, cocoa powder. I, I have about half a cup of uh, spelt, about four tablespoons of cocoa, four and one teaspoon. Um, then I have three teaspoons of flax seeds. Everyone knows what flax seeds are, I guess. Um, these are those little tiny seeds, extremely healthy. That is our source of omega-3s. Um, 
vegans get their omega-3 from, from chia, from flax seeds. So this is a very, very, very good uh, source. Okay, and I have some uh, walnuts or pecans. It's up to you what you like. If you don't, uh, if you cannot eat nuts, you leave them out. This just gives it a little crunch. And I have some 80% uh, dark chocolate. So there's little to no sugar in here. Um, but it's, it, you know, it's vegan. There's no milk in here. I have this as well. I add a tiny little bit of salt. Very often recipes ask for uh, half a teaspoon or quarter teaspoon. I, I don't like that. You know, this is not a, a bread. So I, I, I use just a tiny little bit. It's not even a quarter teaspoon. Um, just to give a little depth. Okay, so this is good. Now I'm going to add... Where's my spoon? Here. Here so I'm going to add a teaspoon of baking, pot, uh, baking soda and I'm going to add a teaspoon of baking powder. Mix this a little. Now I'm going to mix my wet ingredients and later I'm going to mix them together. I'm going to make little brownie cups because I think they're just so much more convenient. Okay. So I'm going to mix the uh, wet ingredients together, which is a quarter cup of apple, apple sauce. Apple sauce we use instead of um, oil. So instead of uh, using butter or margarine, whatever it is, we use apple sauce uh, one to one. So meaning if you have a quarter cup of oil or butter or margarine, we use a quarter cup of apple juice, uh, apple sauce, I'm sorry. And apple sauce you can make very, very easily yourself. Um, just uh, peel the apples, Put them in a pot with just a little bit of water, cinnamon, and let it cook on medium heat until it becomes really, you know, mushy, saucy. Uh, the longer you cook, the saucier it becomes. And that's it. Very, very simple. Um, I have some peanut butter here. This is two, uh, two tablespoons of peanut butter. I do have... Um, I'm going to use a half a cup of maple syrup. I know some of you don't like to use sugar at all. This is for the guys with the sweets too. Uh, I'm one of them, unfortunately. But um, you can leave out the maple syrup and just put in... Um, you can use dried... I'm sure where they are. You can use dried uh, dates, and for instance, this is this is one of those brands. You can just chop them really, really fine, put them in there, and that you could use instead of sugar. So if you don't want to use maple syrup, um, I don't use sh sugar um, as a whole because sugar is a processed food. But maple syrup is, is made from the syrup, and obviously you, you have to use 100% maple syrup so that it still is uh, a whole food. Um, so we mix this all together. Okay. 
Now we're going to mix this into the flour mixture. Mix it up. You can see how chocolatey it becomes because of the uh, cocoa powder. It's going to take a while until the flour absorbs all the, the wet ingredients. As soon as everything is Absorbed, that's it. We don't want to over stir it. See? It's so nice and wet and that's it. This is about the consistency you want it. You see? Yeah. Okay. Now I'm going to add it into Oops. Turn on the water for later. Okay. One way is to use an ice scooper. That is one way to use it. It is uh, easier. You can see that this way. Very simple, very quick. Okay, we put it in the oven for about 30 minutes at 360 degrees, 350. Good. Okay. Good, the brownies are in. So the next thing is I'm going to prepare the buckwheat because that's going to take 15 minutes about. Don't you hit this with an electric stove? You have to control everything. It's, it's just it's annoying. A gas stove is so much easier like we have in the restaurant. So much easier. Okay. I see we have a few more. Hi Kelly, welcome to uh, today's cooking. Uh, hi Justin, welcome. Hi Loretta. Hi Dot. Um, hi Hi Kato. I cannot see the first name. Um, okay, who do we have here? Okay, I see a few questions here. How about almond flour? Yes, absolutely. You can use you can use almond flour. Absolutely. Yeah. If you want to do it uh, gluten free, absolutely. Uh, are the flax seeds grown? No, they're not. It's flax seeds. Um, it, it just gives the uh, a little crunchier consistency later on. Okay. So I'm going to add the buckwheat to the water. I have two cups of water and one cup of uh, buckwheat. I'm going to add it. And I'm going to 
bring it to a boil, and then I'll let it simmer for 15 minutes. Well, let me see who's on uh, Instagram. We have Maureen. Hi, Maureen. We have Joel. We have Chef Jamie. Nice, nice. Uh, welcome, welcome. And we have uh, Mr. Muller, Jake Muller. Welcome. I'm honored. Thank you so much for coming today and for being part of this cooking demonstration. I really appreciate it. Um, okay. The uh, buckwheat is cooking. When the when the uh, when the buckwheat is almost ready, I will add my herbs to it uh, because since I don't have to strain uh, strain the water, all the uh, vitamins going to stay inside. Good. So now we're going to start with the eggplant. Um, the water is boiling for the buckwheat. I want to turn it down. Put a cover on it so that. The water doesn't all the, the water evaporates too much. I want to keep the moisture inside. Um, for the eggplant, as you know, I don't cook with oil, so this is an opportunity to see how I cook with oil and how I not um, mess up the pans. Like uh, I hear, I get so many comments from from other. Um, from other people who are saying, oh, my pan is too dirty, it's too messed up. But it doesn't have to be. Uh, you, all, you just have to have water with it. If you cook with water, then uh, everything is going to be fine. I'm going to show it to you now. I'm going to saute uh, onions and garlic and a little ginger. So you see, I have no oil in here. I'm going to turn it up. It's always, I, I don't have my sous chef on me, so I gotta do everything myself. But that's okay. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to saute the onions um, until I see they're, they're slowly caramelizing. Once I see they're getting slightly brownish on the bottom, that's when I add water to it. But you will see there's, there's no difference um, than if you would cook with oil. The big difference is that you're adding a ton of calories when you add this, when you add this, uh, when you cook with oil. So obviously we're all used to cooking with oil because it adds depth and it adds flavor. It adds, it adds um, decadence to the food. So I understand where we're coming from. Cooking with oil is, um, that's how I was trained. Um, I was trained in classic French cuisine. So what I'm doing here is basically taking the French cuisine apart. And um, it's, it's sometimes frustrating because as Julia, uh, Julia, Child, Julia Child said, uh, butter is flavor. And she was 100% right. But, um, but it also makes you sick. So that's the whole reason why I don't use oil. So you see, it's slightly turning brown here. And it's sticking to the ground. So now it's time to add water to it. And you see, everything is, is gone again. The flavor is now in the water, so that's what I want. Every time it's sticking to the ground, to the to the pan, I'm going to add water to it, and that's how I release the flavor back into the dish. Okay. <clears throat> so now it's time to 
at my eggplant. And right now I have full power, full heat under my eggplant. I want to make sure that um, they're caramelizing without burning, obviously. Okay, my buckwheat is simmering. Okay. okay, let's see. Any more questions? Hi, Lynn. Nice to see you. Welcome. Um, hi, Joel. Okay, I have everyone here. Hi, Omar. Nice to see you. Thanks for coming by. Okay, so again, if you want to cook SOS, meaning uh, no salt, no oil, no sugar, then obviously you're not going to add salt. Um, I add a little bit of salt to it, um, but I always say that if, if you like to reduce your high blood pressure, your high cholesterol, your heart disease, whatever it is, then you definitely should go SOS, meaning no sugar, no oil, no salt. Uh, that's 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 very important. But if you're healthy, if you don't have any issues, um, you can use a little salt. You shouldn't use too much, but uh, um, just just be careful. You see this this whole food plant based diet is gives you magic when it comes to your health. So if you have any kind of um, chronic diseases, then a whole food plant-based diet works wonders. And that's, that's the beauty. And if you, and for those who want to lose weight, it's, it's a definite, oil is a definite normal. So you want to cook without oil, you want, you want to cook with ingredients that are not fat either. So, for instance, avocados are very fatty. You you wouldn't you don't want to eat those. Okay, you see how the pan is turning brown here. You see it. Um, so now I'm going to add a little water to it. You see, all is gone. It's all gone. So, if you cook like that, you let it saute, you let it bake on just a little bit, then you add water or low sodium vegetable broth, that's fine too. Um, then you will see that your vegetables turn you know, slightly brown. Cook. It depends if you want to brown them, it's just uh, you get more flavor. And that's the reason I, I don't use vegetable broth. Vegetable broth is made from a variety of vegetables, obviously. Here I have eggplant. I just want my eggplant flavor. So that's why I use water. And when I add the water, you see the flavor what's baked on in the, in the bottom of the pan. That's what I want. And I have no other flavor but this. That's why I'm using water. Oh, you can use, I mean, you can use low sodium vegetables at any time. If you're in a rush, that's fine. Okay, we're almost in. Now you can see that the eggplant slowly Turning brown, not much, but 
slowly. So I'm going to add my peppers. Yeah. Hi Tiffany, welcome. Thank you for joining us. How do you roast vegetables with no oil? Oh, okay, yeah, that's why I was. Are you talking about roasting in the oven or sauteing? I guess roast. Okay, so I assume you you are asking if you roast vegetable in the oven. Um, that's that's a little tricky because you have to steam the vegetable first. Um, once you steam the vegetable, just for a few minutes, maybe maybe one or two minutes, so it will come, um, you know, not not soft, but you see they becoming water um, watery. So that's the point where you take them out of the steamer. You put them on a Roasting pan, you add all your, spi all your spices and herbs to it, um, and then you put them in the oven. That's when you see those vegetables are turning brown and uh, taste delicious afterwards. But if you, if you, broccoli for instance, you can roast just like that in the oven. That's fine. Um, but sometimes other vegetables, um, if, if they're too big, if they're cut too big, sometimes. They don't roast at night, that if you steam them a few minutes before. Just a little water, and that's almost time to add teriyaki sauce. I see, um, I, taught, I taught myself, Justin is saying, I taught myself how to make ratatouille. Nice. The recipe I used recommend two tablespoons of olive oil. I learned that olive oil has around 190 calories per tablespoon. That is a lot. That's correct. I am I am not salt or sugar free, but if I can avoid using oil, I will. No, absolutely. I mean, oil oil has 4,000 calories per pound. Just if you let this sink, 4,000 calories per pound is oil is the most uh, calorie dense food on the planet. It is absolutely uh, incredible, and it is. You see, the I have researched so many diets as well as the uh, um, Mediterranean diet, and people say they live so healthy because of the oil, and that's not true. Science has taught us that it is not the oil what makes them healthy; it's the vegetables what they eat. It's the vegetables. It's uh, the way they eat, they eat in a group, they eat on the table, they eat together. This is, this feels good. You know, it's, it's not all about food. It's, it's the whole picture. But the oil definitely doesn't make them healthier. That is, that is a myth. Okay. So now, I'm going to add my teriyaki sauce to it. And you can, you can add as much as you want or as little as you want. You can just flavor it with teriyaki sauce. Um, what you want to look is, you want to look for, this is a low sodium teriyaki sauce, and there's no added sugar. So you know, there's a lot of teriyaki sauce with added sugar. Um, you want to make sure you, you get one with no added sugars. Very important. Because you can, you can also make your own. Okay. Just a little water, and that's it. I could add more sauce if I want, a little bit. Okay. So that's your eggplant teriyaki. I'm going to serve it in a minute once the buckwheat is ready. So 
actually is coming around nicely. Has absorbed almost all the water. I'm going to let it cook a little bit more. Okay. And in the meanwhile, I'm going to start the salad. Let's see. In the oven. Yeah, that's why I talked, Tiffany. Okay. Um, so I I guess I answered your question with the, uh, the roasted vegetables. For instance, if you... <clears throat> You can add, uh, for instance, potatoes. You can add potatoes into the oven and roast them. But very often they come out really, really dry. Um, I would steam them just a little bit, just so that they suck up enough water to not dry out in the oven. And that's when it tastes fantastic. Uh, what really makes it great is the spices and the herbs. That is really what's very, very important. Okay. Let me look after my brownies. Ah. Almost done. Good. Okay, now we have this salad. Let me get my plate. And it's a very, very simple salad. Very, very simple. Can you all see my plate? Yeah. Okay, so on the bottom of the plate, I'm going to add like one or two tablespoons of hummus. <coughs> like this, everyone see. Then I'm going to add this beautiful uh, red cabbage leaf. Right in the center here, put it right on top of the hummus. That's it. Before I do that, I think I should do the dressing. Okay. Um, very often, I, I just simply use balsamic vinegar and lemon. And I make my salad, and then I just drizzle it on top of it. But in this case, I want to show you how to make this vinegar. Um, it's just, so if you want to make a little more, you can put it in the fridge, and you ha always have something to use. Um, I'm, I'm not really a fan of, of um, using, using starches to make creamy dressing, vegan dressing. I, I don't really like that. But uh, that's a very simple um, vinaigrette. I'm going to add a tablespoon of balsamic vinegar. Not that. I'm going to add just juice from a half a lemon. And mix it up. So I'm going to add. I'm going to whisk just some plain water into it, very slowly, because the, uh, the mustard <coughs> will absorb anything you will add to it, water, juice, whatever you'd like to add to it. I mean, obviously, <coughs> very simple mustard balsamic vinegar, let's taste it. Needs a little bit more. If you don't like mustard, then use, I mean, don't like to taste, you should add less, obviously. Um, again, as I said, I like to use just vinegar or balsamic vinegar and lemon juice. That's That works for me. Just a little bit, not too much, because you don't want to overpower the salad. Okay, here I have um, three different salads. I have lettuces, I have kale, 
I have spinach and I have arugula. <clears throat> These three are the most powerful greens I think you have. Obviously you have Swiss chard and other green leafy vegetables, but these are very, very powerful. They have, uh, I would almost say, healing powers. So I'm going to add just a little bit of dressing to it. I didn't add sugar to it. If you want, you can add a little maple, maple syrup, syrup to it. Um, if that's what you like. Swing it up a little bit. have a few red onions. Red onions are the most healthiest ones of all of the onions. They have the most antioxidants. Um, <clears throat> the, the way you can see this, color. Um, whenever you see color on a vegetable, that's your antioxidant. Um, that's why I like to use purple um, eggplant, a Chinese eggplant. This is a Chinese one. Um, you see that color? These are the antioxidants. You don't want to peel them. If you peel them away, you put the best part away. Uh, carrots, you have carotenoids in here. Carotenoids is what make carrot orange. It's also what makes tomatoes red. Um, then we have red cabbage. Red cabbage is the most powerful of all vegetables when it comes to antioxidants. Um, has the highest amount of antioxidants of all of them. So that's why I like to add it to my salads. So add these. Up here. Then I have radishes again here. The red is your antioxidant. And you can decorate it the way you want it anyway. I just want to make it a little nice so because the eye always eats as well. Then I have peaches. A few strawberries here. <clears throat> Just a little bit of carrots on top. And top it with a little bit of red cabbage. Man, you can put you can make a big plate and make it yours. Uh, obviously, the more the merrier the better. But this is just, you know, you know, if you have a, a little dinner with your spouse or your, your boyfriend or girlfriend, I think it's, it's very nice to add something, you know, that pleases the eye. You want to see? So it's, it's very, very simple. Um, are very healthy and I think my bones are ready. Yep. When you put in the toothpicks and it comes out clean, your brownies are ready. Buckwheat is ready. Turn this off. Any other questions in between? 
Uh, steaming veggies before roasting in the oven is great. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, Janice. Hi, Janice. I think I didn't say hello yet. Um, I love salads. Yes, it's beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, very simple. Obviously, when you make yourself a salad for lunch, it, it shouldn't be that small. You can make a big bowl of salad. That's what we do. Uh, that's what vegans do. We uh, you, Your bowl of salad should be big. You know, it, it depends what you eat after the salad. I mean, uh, salad doesn't really fill you up. So you can have a big salad with all these great ingredients. And uh, it just, there, there are no calories in here. So for instance, um, green leafy vegetables, they don't have more than 100, 150 calories per pound. So imagine you eat a pound of green uh, leafy vegetables. That's nothing, but it's healthy. The, the amount of nutrients you get in those foods are absolutely unbelievable. So that's the difference between a whole food plant-based diet and a, a regular Western diet, because the Western diet is calorie dense, and our diet is nutrient dense. That's the whole difference. That's why uh, when you transition to a whole food plant-based diet, you live healthier because first of all, uh, you eat less calories, although you could eat the same amount of calories with, with vegetables, but the nutrients you get are much, much higher than someone who eats a steak for lunch. You know, steak doesn't have much nutrients. Yes, it has uh, minerals, absolutely, and it has vitamin B12, which we don't get, but uh, that's it. But when you compare the nutrients in a salad, it's unmatched. So once you finish your salad, that's when you can go to your eggplant and uh, buckwheat, whatever you like, and eat to your heart's content, because we don't need to count calories. That is the beauty in our lifestyle. There's no calorie counting whatsoever, as long as you don't use oil, and as long as you don't use sugar, and well, and depend, if you eat a ton of um, uh, maple syrup, yes, that's of course, that's not good. But uh, you wanna keep it into moderation. Thank you, Tiffany. Um, okay, good. Let's serve main dish. <coughs> oh, yeah. I forgot my oats. I wanted to show you my oats I have here. I have fresh oregano for my garden. Actually, um, the eggplant were for my garden, uh, the herbs. The tomatoes, I didn't, I didn't use tomatoes today, but uh, the peppers. Um, so it, it's quite a bit I got from my yard, so it, it's really cool. Um, this is oregano. Can you see? Um, this is the little flower on top. It, extremely pungent. There's a lot of flavor in there. You don't want to use too much of it because it flavors dishes incredibly. These and I now have fresh sage also from my yard. Sage, everyone knows those little leaves here, very intensive too. So that's why I'm going to add them last minute to it. First of all, it, it uh, maintains the nutrients and it's, uh, it's just healthy. Probably an ice cream or two. 
I'm just going to add one spoon to it. You can add as, as much as you like to use. And again, you can make it as saucy as you want by adding more teriyaki sauce to it, a little bit more water maybe. I didn't. But it's up to you. Oh. Add a little bit of oregano on top. And that's your eggplant teriyaki with buckwheat and herbs. Very, very simple. Very healthy and 100% uh, whole food. Very simple. So I, I always try to promote very simple cooking methods. Yeah, I know when when someone says, "Oh, yeah, he's a chef, he cooks, you know, complicated meals and stuff." That's not what I promote. I yes, I can cook very, very elegant. I, I worked over 10 years in a four-star hotel. Um, from that point of view, I have absolutely no issues cooking very, very high-end cuisine. But uh, when it comes to whole food, plant-based cuisine for everyone or for people who want to learn it, it makes no sense to make it complicated. So I try to make it as simple as possible. And what I also try to do is I try to teach someone who likes to adapt this kind of cuisine to cook without recipes. Uh, now it's mind blowing, but um, I only look at recipes to get it inspired. But when I go to the stove, I cook my own. That is different from when it comes to baking. Baking, you need to have a recipe, 100%. But when it comes to cooking, I, I want uh, my students um, to see and to envision something, what they can do. And it's, you know, it's very easy to follow a recipe, but once you know what you can do out of a certain dish, then the, uh, the world is your oyster. <laughs> oyster, not a, not a plant-based food, but uh, so to speak. So the sky is the limit. I, I always try to tell everyone, hey, listen, um, once you know the basics, you can build on your basics. For instance, you know, a bouillon. I know bouillon is cooked from, from beef bones. However, uh, if you make a vegetable stock, from this vegetable stock, you can make hundreds, if not thousands, of different soups. You know, it, to mushroom soup, broccoli soup, uh, uh, leek soup. There's, there's no end as to what you can do with that base stock. Uh, it's the same with, uh, with vegetables and other um, ingredients. There's, there's always a base, and then you can elaborate on that. So it's uh, obviously you need to be exposed to it to, in order to learn and to learn with, to cook without vegetables. But the, the key here is, and that's the key is, to know how to cook without a recipe, because when you come home one day and you, uh, you're you struggling, oh, what am I gonna do, uh, this, you know, I have nothing. You go back to your basics, oh, let me see what I have. Then from there, you can see, okay, I have onions, I have garlic, that's, that's my base for anything I wanna cook. I have water, um, I have mushrooms, I have uh, whatever else there is. There is. It, you can mix any type of vegetable to this mixture of onions and garlic. Anything, it doesn't matter what it is, and you can elaborate on that. Then you can determine, is it going to be a tomato sauce? Is it going to be a green sauce? Is it going to be a clear sauce? Or is it going to be a, an Asian sauce? Um, that's, you can determine later on, but there is no recipe needed for that. Um, obviously, yes, recipe, you know, if, if you have a complicated dish, you want to go by recipes, but 
when it comes to cooking at home and you need to survive in your transition to, to the plant side, then it is to your benefit to learn uh, without recipes. So that's, that's my take on it. Um, yeah, any other questions? Hi, Adriana. Thank you. Uh, hello from California. Um, thank you, Mary. Hi, Mary. Hi, Dicey. Thank you, thank you. Um, okay, good. So let's see how the muffin came out. Let me put this on a plate. Let's take this one. Okay. Okay. So this is a, I don't know, I, I think uh, quite a few of you came late. Um, this is a, a brownie made in a muffin cup. You can obviously make it in a flat pan. That's fine. Uh, it's made with spelt flour. It's, uh, I put some uh, maple syrup to it, to, just to sweeten it a little bit. I added um, flaxseed, added walnuts. Um, let's see how it is. Yeah, you see it's still a little moist inside. That's good. You wouldn't, excuse me, you wouldn't realize it's not plant based. But it's really cool. We have, it's the chewiness you have, chocolatey, the nuts will give you the little crunchy. Um, I like it. I really like it a lot. Um, good, good. Okay. As I said earlier, my my website is live now and i will post my recipe going forward on my website i'm going to link it to my live stream so in this case you always know which one is which um let's see who we have here hi tina uh i cannot see it Yes. Is grape seed oil good for use? Um, yeah, absolutely. It's a, it's a good oil. I don't use this oil. I don't use oil, but it's definitely a very good oil. Absolutely. Um, any other questions? Then um, I would say that's it for me today for cooking with Chef Ryan. I thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, Again, I will post the recipes hopefully by tonight. And uh, my website is obviously eatlikeavegachef.com. And uh, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, Adrian. Okay. Good. Okay. Then I'll see you next time, um, next Thursday at 1 p.m. as usual. If you have any suggestions, what you want me to cook, I'd be happy to cook anything you like. Um, obviously, I only have an hour time. You, you let me know what uh, you want me to cook. Just put it in the comments, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.